This episode of The Minimalist is brought to you by nobody, because advertisements suck. This podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are The Minimalists. And there's a reason we're on the same camera today, if you're watching this on YouTube. We just had to be next to each other today. We've never done this before. There are three guests in the studio. And you can't tell, we're all appropriately distanced, so don't worry. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Today we're going to talk about the 2020 election. Uh, So I think this is actually going to come out a day early, Ryan. So we're going to get this uh, out a day before the election. We want to talk about the current political divide. Mm. We want to talk about how we can find unity even when we disagree. And uh, so we've got some folks here we may agree with, we may disagree with. And by the end of this episode, we'll all tell you who you should vote for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim Iverson's here from The Kim Iverson Show on YouTube. I think the only political show I still watch, so thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, T.K. Coleman, Revolution of One. <laughs> Jamie uh, Kilstein is here. Uh, your, your your new podcast title keeps throwing me off. It's a fuck ups guide to self help. Fuck ups guide to self help. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no metaphor. That is what that is what it is. Uh, I am a fuck up, and I am helping people. <laughs> so it's we're perfect. here today to talk about the uh, the sort of fallout. Uh, what's what's about to happen? Mm. We don't know actually what's going to happen. The reason I wanted the five of us here is I suspect. Well, I don't know this. Yeah. I suspect all five of us may have voted differently mm. this year. Mm. I haven't voted yet. Probably. Okay, yeah. I'm voting on election day. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. So, so, so by the time that's like this no Christmas Eve present, we're doing right. it on the yeah. fucking doing day. Doing it on the day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually voting the day after. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think someone tricked you, but <laughs> do you? They said it was Wednesday. Uh, as long as it's postmarked by <laughs> did election you look day. like a Trump. Would be my question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So he, here's the reason I wanted the five of us to be here. I, I think we all think differently, but we don't let our preferences ruin our relationships with other people yeah, yeah and and i've i've noticed that with the three of you like we can yeah, i say kim's show is the only show i watch regularly about politics we probably agree 40 to 60 percent of the time on things i feel like that number's gone down last time i saw you i feel like that was maybe <laughs> 80 <laughs> 80 hey, right? maybe 70, our mind 80? keeps changing <laughs> 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 whatever we agree like there's obviously amount of time that, that we disagree on on things right it doesn't mean there's a right or wrong necessarily and and i wanted to start today because i'm going to really give the floor to you all so this is probably going to be the last time i do much speaking i want to talk about the problem with labels because i could very easily say well the, the reason i wanted kim and tk and jamie to be on is we have a progressive a libertarian and um there's a fucking libertarian here i'm out i'm out I'm i didn't know that i wouldn't hold that uh, and i think they're called lol libertarians now yeah. oh that's great so, but i could say we have a progressive a libertarian right, right, right. and a liberal here and what do all those things mean but i want to talk about the problem with labels so this is from a book by Anthony DeMello called Awareness. By the way, this is my added value today because we're going to skip that. We're not going to have a bunch of time. So um, added value segment today right now. Anthony DeMello's Awareness. I want to read this section about labels. It's on page 37 here. Awareness without evaluating everything. Do you want to change the world? How about beginning with yourself? How about being transformed yourself first? But how do you achieve that? through observation, through understanding, through no interference or judgment on your part, because what you judge, you cannot understand. When you say of someone, he's a communist, understanding has only has stopped at that moment. You slapped a label on him. She's a capitalist. Understanding has stopped at that moment. You slapped a label on her. And if the label carries undertones of approval or disapproval, so much the worse. Mm. How are you going to understand what you disapprove of or what you approve of for that matter? All this sounds like a new world, doesn't it? No judgment, no commentary, no attitude. One simply observes, one studies, one watches without the desire to change what is. Because if you desire to change what is into, into what you think should be, you no longer understand. I wanted to start with that because I think we have a great divide right now. And the reason that I love the three of you is you have the opportunity to talk to some folks today who are feeling some discontent around our current disunification. And it's not about liberal, conservative, left, right, red, blue. Personally, I don't care who you voted for. 
Um, what I care about is who you are as a person, right? And so I wanted to talk today about where we are right now. In fact, uh, during the Maximal episode, we're going to review my ballot. And uh, I think one of you may even try to talk me out of voting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, I also wanted to go, I was considering, since, since election day is right here, I was considering to see how many days I could go without figuring out who won. Mm. But I don't know if I'm going to actually do that. Um, I mean, that sounds great. It does. <laughs> I really <laughs> love that as a in, minimalist in challenge. 30-day challenge. Yeah. That's like... <laughs> That's like a spa day. That's amazing. Yeah, you should. You should. I'm. I'm curious. Okay. I, yeah. Well, You'd I'm going to get try into it. a bunker. I'm going to have to stay off social media. You are going to sure. try. It. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just talked into it. I'll do it with All you. Right. Yeah. I'll okay. do it with you. Right. We're yeah. going to see how many okay. days, <laughs> yeah. or weeks, or months we can go. Yeah. We, we we should keep it up like on Twitter or whatever, and we'll or like without looking. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I'm in. I'm in. I want to try this. All right. Well, let's start. We don't have voicemail today. We have some uh, questions from our Patreon folks. Let's start with Mike. If your values aren't aligned with either of the major party candidates, is voting for a third party candidate really a wasted vote? Hmm. Now, Kim, you've talked about this uh, extensively on your channel. Let's talk about this. Wasted votes, third parties, undecideds. What are your thoughts? Yeah, there's no such thing as a wasted vote. Your mm. vote is your vote. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, that's how we actually voice our opinions, right? So if you are constantly just stuck in this two-party paradigm and you're going with one or the other and that's it, then how are we ever voicing to the two parties that we're unsatisfied with them? Yeah. The only way is to cast a vote, right? That's the only real thing we've got. So we have to cast that vote for the third party or the right in in order to say, I don't like either of you yeah. mm. and send that message. Whether, you know, then people say, oh, well, then that means, you know, and I get it all the time because I, I do plan when I do go in and vote to, to either write in or to vote a third party. I haven't quite decided yet. Mm. And, um, you know, I hear it all the time that people say, oh, well, then that's a vote for Trump. Right. I get that one a lot. Yeah. But then from the other side, I get, well, that's a vote for Biden. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I, I always think that um, it's a cop out for people who go after third party voters. Um, I covered Ralph Nader when uh, during the first George W. Bush uh, election, got to interview him, got to sit with him. And it was so interesting because a lot of Democrats that I talked to aligned so much more with Nader than they did with Al Gore. Mm -hmm. And instead of seeing a problem with the Democratic Party and the establishment and going, oh, why do the people who claim to represent me actually not represent me? And I have more in common with the 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 seatbelt guy. Um, they would people got so mad at Nader instead of getting mad at the system. And I just want to say, like, I'm terrified. Uh, I'm not a fan of Trump. Uh, I'm going to vote for Biden. I'm not a fan of Biden. I want I tweeted this yesterday. I want Biden to win so I can go back to criticizing Biden without getting shit from my liberal friends. Um, and I just feel like, OK, the bar. But I voted for Nader. I voted for Kucinich during the primaries because they aligned more um, with who I believed in. And it, what, I think what we saw with going from Hillary Clinton to Joe Biden is that the Democratic establishment didn't really learn their lesson mm. and Hillary should have wiped the floor with Donald Trump, um, even though, again, I don't agree with a lot of uh, of Clinton's and they didn't learn. And so sometimes it does take protest uh, to do it. And people who are still, you know, I still see people on Twitter. Oh, I hope you're happy, Jill Stein. I hope you're <laughs> happy like Susan Sarandon. I'm like, you're stop going after the old actor lady and the Green Party like it's our establishment that is broken, that has brought us here, mm -hmm. that is why people would vote for someone mm -hmm. like Donald Trump. Like, we screwed up. It's not Susan Sarandon's fault. Right. TK, well, let's, uh, what are we going to talk to Mike about here? Um, he said his views don't, uh, don't align with either major party candidate. Is voting for a third party candidate a wasted vote? Mm -hmm. I know how you feel, but can you express to me how you feel? Yeah, so imagine going to a restaurant and there are only two items on the menu. The I shop. love this restaurant. This <laughs> is great. I want great, one right? item. What if, what if both of them are filled with gluten, though? Uh, well, I can't go to the restaurant. <laughs> well, so this restaurant well, has I two vote items. I'm Nader. <laughs> My man. I'm sorry, TK. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so okay. you're at a restaurant. You got two choices. Both of them have gluten. That's that's the start. Yeah, okay. Point. Yeah. <laughs> One it's a very item. unpopular restaurant. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> We're never going to do this podcast. <laughs> 
Um, All right, <clears throat> just skip to the three minute mark to get past my comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's the shit sandwich, mm. yeah. and then there's the piss milkshake. Ooh. <laughs> and you look at that menu and you say, I don't like either one of these, mm. but you know, I gotta get something. I came out to the restaurant. Uh, I think I'd rather eat shit than drink piss. Mm. And so you ordered the really? shit sandwich. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I can't believe you'd vote for a shit sandwich. <laughs> Man, this thing tastes like crap. <laughs> I do want to know everybody's answer to what you would pick. Right. The piss milkshake, you Obviously. maniac. <laughs> Obviously. Not the shit sandwich. Obviously. Jesus Christ. So wait, is Trump the piss milkshake or I don't know. is Biden the piss milkshake? <laughs> All right. Why, could you get through it faster? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like it blends in. There's other, it's just shit on bread. Oh, this yeah. is supposed to be the intelligent, like political <laughs> episode, right? Um, All right. All right. All right. Back to the yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you, you order the piss milkshake mm-hmm. because you think to yourself, well, at least that's not as bad. Mm-hmm. There's ice cream in there, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Not just ice shit cream and, and bread, right, like right. yeah, little cinnamon, <laughs> oh, little cinnamon. Now I'm in. Now I want a piss milkshake. I'm gonna be you guys. <laughs> if you think about the buying decisions you make as a signal mm. that you're emitting to the marketplace, you are essentially incentivizing the restaurant to never change, mm-hmm. because the message you're sending to the marketplace is no matter how crappy my options are. I will always force myself to put up with it before I challenge you to do better. Mm -hmm. The only way you get a restaurant that says, man, if I wanna stay in business, if I wanna maintain people's respect and loyalty, I gotta change something here and add a third option or a fourth option Mm -hmm. because the people aren't choosing what I'm presenting to them. And I believe the same way as politically, you know, our politics reflects our consciousness as a people. And if we continue to force ourselves to accept one of the two options on the table, no matter how much we dislike them, because we buy into this philosophy that says it is a waste to do anything else, then we are never going to create change. You've heard this cliche before that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And what do we hear every election? Every They're election. Still pissing my milkshake. <laughs> right. yeah. Every election, we hear people say, "Oh, but this one's different." I, I hear what you're saying, TK. Right? This is what the audience is saying right now. I hear what you're saying, TK, and I totally get that in in a perfect election year. But this is the most important election in history. And what I say to that is, every election can't be the most important one in history. Mm-hmm. At some point, we have to exercise the bravery yeah. and the courage to deviate from the narratives of fear and say, I'm willing to put up with a little pain, a little criticism, a little inconvenience in order to send a signal to the political marketplace saying, I want something different. Now, I will say one more thing, which is, and I don't disagree with any of that, um, but just because I only talked about third party in my first answer, what I do want to point out is it is possible. So with Barack Obama, right? Barack Obama was a, a... center left state senator from uh chicago he was always much more moderate than people thought he was um and a lot of really important reform you know i mean just same-sex marriage like lgbt rights like happened under obama because people uh demanded it right and i think that if you so i'm just gonna say for me uh, so I align more with uh, with liberals, not a huge fan of Joe Biden. But if you do feel like your third party vote is wasted or that this election is important, but you're like, oh, I really don't like Joe Biden or I really don't like Trump, you can still vote for that person. Put your team, quote unquote, and I hate using that word, but you get it uh, a little bit ahead, like set the bar to kind of what aligns with you. And then, like, I'm going to vote for Biden, and then I'm going to protest the shit out of Biden mm-hmm. and be like, hey, these are the things that your party demands. Mm-hmm. And for me, being liberal, trying to get the establishment left to actually represent uh, the left a little more, to represent the American people. So I think that people underestimate protest. I mean, did you ever think we would see Hillary Clinton talking about Black Lives Matter? I mean, she straight up, like— was pulling some like racist uh, rhetoric when she was running against Obama, but the people demanded that these issues matter to us, that what's happening to black people in the street matter to us. And suddenly you see Hillary Clinton being like, we have to support Black Lives Matter. So even outside of the election booth, the people's voice does make a difference. Um, You just have to be loud and demanded and be like, hey, I voted for you. Now this is what I expect. You know, it's hard, Mm. but it, 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 you can still protest without, uh, having a protest vote necessarily, you just actually have to, you can't just sit back 
and 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 relax. And I think to your yeah. point too, a lot of people are happy voting for Biden, and they're like, all right, I'm done. See you in four years. And that's why a lot of these disappointments with Obama happened. People were so excited about Obama that they forgot to hold him accountable. And so suddenly, a lot of these policies that we thought we were going to have with Obama, you know, the way he treated whistleblowers, uh, I mean, a whole host of things, um, people were really disappointed. And it's like we kind of let him get away with that. We voted, and then we peaced out. You know. Mm. You know, in theory, uh, I love what TK is saying. And in practice, I love what you're saying. It's like uh, if we don't vote for a third party or abstain from voting for either party, no matter how you do it, it's like, how will it ever change? But in the same token, we live in this world where it's like we, we're almost f uh, forced to figure out what to do with with the vote that we have. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, what we all agree on is that we need change. Is yeah. that systematically we're, the the system is broken? For yeah. sure. Ryan, in theory, I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love you in theory and in practice. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm interested to hear what Kim has to say about Holly's question here. Is it okay to minimize politics in my life and ignore the social media posts, the news, and the debates that feel very toxic? Or is it my responsibility as a citizen to be well informed and confident in my political opinions? That's a great question. Well, there's mm. a few yeah. few few words that stand out to me in here. Responsibility. Hmm. And Kim, I, the reason this question is fascinating and, and why we picked it here, and, and especially for you, is you're. You do a political show, so you're sort of forced to have this information, disinformation, anxiety thrust upon you on a sort of daily basis. Yeah, and it's really, and it is very stressful. Uh, and it's important, I think, to always find ways to completely detach and unplug from yep. from the, the narratives that are out there. I don't think it's anybody's, I, I think it's your responsibility as an individual to know about the issue so that you can cast an informed vote. Mm. But beyond that, I don't think you have any responsibility to engage with anybody else about politics. I don't think you have to get involved in the mudslinging because that's what it really has kind of boiled down to out yeah. in social media is just a bunch of mudslinging. Yes. Mm. So I don't think anybody has any responsibility or, uh, or you know, should they, you know, they must get involved. I don't think they need to. They just need to know the issues for themselves. And I personally surround myself uh, my closest friends, my relationship, my best friends, those people in my close inner circle are not political at all. Mm. And they are the people that they are informed, so they cast their And I don't even know who they're voting for. I don't mm. even know oh. who the person I'm in a relationship with. I don't know who they're voting for. Mm. I have literally no That's idea great. who he's voting for. <laughs> and it's, But he, I know he's very informed. I know he knows way more about the propositions than even I do. But nonetheless, so like Kanye. the conversation's not. Yeah, probably, exactly. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably I'll probably open up and be like, who did you vote for? Yeah. Kanye? Well, I, 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 I feel the same way. Like I, I have no idea who Jordan is voting for. I'm, he's maybe writing himself in if I had to guess anything. <laughs> um, Kanye. <laughs> and well, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like you I said, there's, there's five of us at this table. Like I know Ryan yeah. and I are voting differently. I know my wife and I are voting differently. Yeah. And I know TK and I are voting differently because one of us isn't voting. Um, <laughs> although let's talk about that. Um, that's all we, we always talk about, like um, voting, not voting, et cetera. In fact, we You're had not voting. Uh, we had a question here about um, when is it okay not to vote. It's from our maximum episode, so we might as well go ahead and ask it now. Oh, can I say something for Holly then real quick? Yeah, go for it. Because so my life has changed dramatically, and it totally revolves around Holly's question, where I used to be very political, tweeting every day, getting into fights with like politicians and journalists, and I thought I was doing this great job. And when it comes to responsibility, the only responsibility that I take on now is being a good person and leading with like love. And even though I was more active politically back then, I was a shittier person. I was ignoring the clerk at the grocery store because I was tweeting my hot take. And now like everyone at the grocery store knows me by name because I have conversations with them. And, but I struggle. You think that makes you a good person? I think that in my day to day life, I am a kinder person who is making the people who I encounter with their life better whether it's mm -hmm. me as a son I call my mom more I call my nephews more um, but I struggle like Holly does mm -hmm. where there are certain times where I go is this just me being apathetic mm -hmm. is this bypass where I'm bypassing these larger issues to be like I'm nice to the guy at Starbucks when like I should be able to do both things right and so I'm trying to find that balance where I, I will still engage a little politically but to what Kim was saying too I don't 
Facebook, Twitter, that's not actually being – people think that's being politically active. But well, because it apes the form of doing something, but you're not actually no, accomplishing Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, you're having toxic arguments with strangers with frog memes or like in their mm. Twitter profile. And it's like, is this really me standing up for democracy? Mm. As opposed to I would rather be a little less informed, a little on social media less, still have my values intact. Because mm. by the way, when I was on Twitter, there were some times when I'm like – I have this thought and I don't know if my liberal friends are going to like this or I have this thought and I don't want Rogan to see it or whatever and I wouldn't tweet it. Uh. So I was still like I wasn't actually making up my own mind whereas now consuming less mm. I'm actually more sort of uh, firm in where I stand where I'm like oh I believe these things because I believe these things. Yeah. Also uh, when we're tied to an outcome I think it's a bit of a problem here right? 100%. Uh, yeah. So, so Ryan um I know you and I probably differ on this a little bit, so I'm interested to hear your, your thoughts and then we can have the group weigh in here. Uh, very recently, we've, we've seen these campaigns of make sure you get out and vote. Mm -hmm. And Some even say it doesn't even matter who you vote for as long as you vote. Right. I, I, yeah. I see that, Oof. but it, that seems incredibly <laughs> disingenuous to me. But why? I mean, I at least respect someone like, uh, you know, a, a Dan Savage or a you know a Ben Shapiro who tell you know, go out and vote for my Ex candidate right. septuagenarian yeah um, or else stay at home <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, and and that's kind of what they're saying but when someone says you just get out and vote it's your duty to vote I I don't know that like. I don't know why that's constantly being thrust upon me as though it's my my duty mm. to vote yeah no I think for me I was raised. Uh, being discouraged to vote um, as a Whoa. Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are very politically neutral, which is funny because it's, <laughs> you know, in theory, you can stay politically neutral, but in practice, like you're political whether you vote or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. So growing up and being discouraged to vote, um, I feel like it was, a, it was a huge disservice to myself. So I encourage people to get involved in democracy. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how that could ever be a bad thing to encourage people to get involved with democracy. Because when I because when I say, hey, go out and vote, I truly do mean like, hey, look, this is a privilege. Mm. Democracy is a privilege. Mm -hmm. Participate. Yeah. Yeah. So I, Jonathan says, is it acceptable if I intentionally choose not to vote? Now, yeah. T TK, what are you what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Can I can I can I get a little something in? I want to read about the the first yes. part of that question. Yeah, go for it. The, the whole responsibility part of like consuming a bunch of Yeah. This is from uh, Lori Boxer's um, um, Swamp Gas, and, and it's called News at 11. And uh, all right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the News at 11. Channel 1 had a special about yellow alert, so I worried a lot, don't want to get hurt. Channel 2 said the flu was going around, so I got a flu shot and went out of town. Channel 3 said those flu shots were dangerous too, so I turned on Channel 4 to find out what to do. They said see a doctor so I could survive. In the waiting room, I waited and watched Channel 5. Mm. Channel 5 and a tranquilizer made me feel fine. Those soap opera problems are much worse than mine. But at home, Channel 6 had a story about pills and how people drop dead from prescription, from prescription or thrills. Mm. So I called back the doctor as I watched Channel 7. A star was in rehab. News at 11. So I went into rehab where I watched Channel 8, all about crime and murder and hate. And when I got home, I tuned in Channel 9 and watched blood and horror on some battle line. Mm. I took a deep breath and screamed. And then gave up and fainted as I watched Channel 10. When the paramedics woke me, the answer was clear. Mm -hmm. So I killed my TV and stopped living in fear. Mm. If you have a responsibility at all, I think you have a responsibility to uncouple from any conversations or form of content consumption that is distracting you from making investments in your purpose and in your potential. Yeah. The Amen. best way to make the world better is to make yourself better. Focus on the things within your locus of control mm -hmm. and then challenge other people to become better human beings in ways that transcend telling them how immoral they are for not voting in the way that you want oh, them to vote. Absolutely. There's so much moralizing. I agree going with that in practice. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and well, I can obviously tell, Kim, like what your views are as you express them eloquently on your YouTube channel. What I don't see there is a a moralizing that I see from a lot of these people, whether it's a Dave Rubin or a Sam Cedar, there's like a moralizing of, of course I'm right and wrong, but when I look at someone like TK, he's not saying there's a, a right or wrong. Mm -hmm. he, he's saying that I'm going to improve myself. Yeah, I mean, we all have different life experiences and that's where we're drawing all of our, our perspectives from, right? 
and each of us have you know we're walking in our own shoes as they say and you if you don't if you want to know what somebody else is thinking and walk a mile in theirs mm. um, which we can't really actually do so you know I don't think that there is a lot of I for me the way that I look at things is I just try to figure out why a person has the perspective they're having where are they coming from in order to get to that point yes yeah and that's so huge because something we haven't talked about is if you want to change someone's mind you know what I mean? Like calling someone a Nazi, they're right. probably not going to be like, all right, I'm listening. Yeah. Like, they're out. You're, you're yelling. I'm a Nazi. Tell me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yelling at each other on Twitter now. Um, as opposed to I want to find out why you're voting for Trump, because maybe you're not a racist. Maybe you actually, you know, there were a lot of places where Obama and Trump won in the same district. And it's like, right, because Obama ran against the establishment on change. Trump is the ultimate anti-establishment. There has to be some truth in a conspiracy for people to believe the conspiracy. So when Trump talked about fake news, when Trump talked about the swamp, he was right mm -hmm. about the, the, the problem. Maybe not about the solution. Maybe he was part of that swamp. Maybe his family lives in the swamp. But there was a swamp, right? And so people were outraged and they knew the system was broken. And so they went, okay, I want to understand that because I probably have a lot in common with Trump people. And then we can talk about, you know, look, there are certain issues to me that are not political that should not be democrat and republican racism homophobia sexism These they are, are political the, the pol politics simply means the affairs of the people right right or but what i mean is like it city. shouldn't be about sides that should be something where we all gather around and we're like yeah racism's bad we should stop it not well, hey there's a racist candidate and there's a not racist candidate or there's a racist party and a not racist party to, to jamie's point i remember one time when britney spears first came out <laughs> and I, I heard her music and everybody was going crazy over it right and i remember saying Man, people are just stupid. People like this, they're just stupid. And my, my brother Lamar said the following to me. He said, if your explanation for why a whole bunch of people like something that you don't like or understand is that they're just stupid, then you're the one that's stupid, mm, right? Love that. um, and you can't get better in life. You can't get smarter in life unless you do the hard work necessary to understand why people think differently than yeah. you on yeah. issues that are very sensitive. And so I think Jamie's absolutely right. Most political discussion centers around slam dunking on people, preaching to the choir, mm. and not genuinely understanding, yes. hey, why do you think the way you do? You yeah. know, But we make progress by having that kind of now, conversation. TK, yeah. I'm not going to let you get away from this uh, question. We're going to save it for the maximal. <laughs> Is it acceptable if I intentionally choose mm. not to vote? We're going to save that because we need to move on to, well, what time is it, Ryan? You know what time it is. It is time for the lightning round where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions and comments to 937-202-4654. Yes, indeed. Those texts go to both of our phones. We answer as many as we can. We also answer some on the podcast here. Now, during the lightning round, you all have been previous guests before, so you probably remember it's 140 characters or less. We, 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 uh, we try to sum it up in something pithy, but not really. We I don't have a Twitter account for a reason, guys. Oh, <laughs> man. I'm so bad at it. You'd be well, the like, person who's like, one out of 24 <laughs> tweets. Right. And like, yeah. we, we just maunder on a bit until we figure out something pithy that, that Podcast Sean can tweeze out, put in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you like. And now you can find all of our minimal maxims in one place, minimal maximsmaxims.com. Ryan, we have a question from Elizabeth. Is this really the best we have to offer? Or is the system so broken that the best and brightest are excluded from political leadership because responsible, conscientious, ethical people are eliminated early on or simply can't afford the outrageous budget required to compete as a candidate? Here's my pithy answer for you all, and then I'll let you unpack it here. A corrupt system does not make room for the truth. Uh, my pithy answer is she was right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tweet this, that. This is not the best we have. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the system blocks out, like we have heard from people who have, like Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, right? They made a lot of noise on social media because they were going against party orthodoxy. And what happened? They're Russian agents, right? Instead mm -hmm. of, even if I don't agree with everything Tulsi uh, says, even if I don't agree with anything Andrew Yang says, they're both saying things that are kind of different, and that's cool. And what if we like apply, like what if Biden took Yang's universal income? What if uh, 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 another Democrat was like, yeah, Tulsi's kind of right. We were the anti-war party. Mm -hmm. Why are we suddenly, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like there are ways that we should be able to take from these voices or, I mean, 
again, back to Nader, like they didn't let homeboy in the debate. They learned mm. with Ross Perot. This is what happens when you get a yeah. third voice in the debate and it kind of shakes things up and we don't like it. Right. And the establishment wants to keep things establishment. So she's kind of right. Yeah. I don't know when I see things like Unity 2020 getting, uh, you know, muted on Twitter. I mean, it's. Mm. Are you guys familiar with the Unity yeah. 2020 thing? No, totally yeah. no, I'm not. <clears throat> it's the it's what um, which Weinstein? I always forget which one it was. Uh, Eric, Eric, Brett, yeah, Brett, which yeah. one of them? Not Harvey. It. You got you got to get that right. You got to <laughs> get that. Right. <laughs> not Harvey. Uh, one of the Weinstein brothers started this this movement where it's you take a candidate from the Republican side and a candidate from the Democratic side and you create a Unity ticket, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then one and they do a, a coin toss to decide which one is president, and which one's vice, and then at the end of the four years if they win then they have to reverse roles mm. so i think mm. this year it was dan crenshaw and tulsi gabbard yes, were the yeah. two picks mm-hmm. so tulsi from the democratic side and dan crenshaw from the republican and then they would form this unity ticket the idea is that then this would unify america that these would be candidates that people could get behind and that people would realize that we don't live in such a polarized two-party system mm. it's kind of a way to oh and uh one of the um, important aspects of it is getting on the ballot because ballot access is a real problem for third parties right and yes. so yes. what the unity 2020 movement was going to do was try to get um the libertarian party actually has more ballot access in more states than green mm-hmm. but green does have uh, some 20 something states that they're on the, the ballot for mm. so unity 2020's idea was then to go and petition um basically the libertarian or green party in each state to try to get on the ballot for them oh, wow. mm-hmm. yeah to be the candidates for their for their i think libertarian would be more likely to do it but mm-hmm. i don't could yeah. green has got some issues going on internally right mm-hmm. now i'm not sure if they would but yeah. it's a good idea not sure if it would actually work in practice and you also obviously you need a lot of money and just to the question money it takes money, mm-hmm. and I think this just goes to show that money cannot buy anything. Right, yeah. um, right. Like a really good candidate. Man, yeah. how gross mm-hmm. is it whenever you see how much like the mainstream Democrats or Republicans spent, and you just think about how many people we could have fed with that? Yeah. You know, especially I mean, right now. I know, yeah. I know, and it's just it's it j- just to get a bunch of just to get two candidates that no one's happy with. Hey, yeah. may- maybe it actually takes a lot of money to get a bad candidate. Mm. Mm. Pithy, 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 pithy. That was yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, you can tweet that podcast, Sean. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead, though. Although it's fashionable to say people are stupid, I don't think people are stupid. No. I think people know when someone's lying to them or not. People know when somebody's speaking straight. And in order to suppress the truth, in order to prevent people from discovering the truth, it takes a heck of a lot of effort to drown out the voice of truth. Right. Um, It was I believe it was G.K. Chesterton who spoke of the truth being so dangerous that it has to be surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. Mm. And so one of the ways that you push the voices of truth who call out the corruption in the system. Right. Who who say the things that we're uncomfortable hearing and saying ourselves, you you drown them out. Mm. You you put a price tag on everything and you say, hey, you got to have this much money if you even want to participate in the debate. Right. Think about how much money is spent just in keeping certain voices from even participating in debates so that we can't see Biden or Trump being challenged by a different way of thinking. I think think it takes a lot of money to keep the poor people in the power, keep the incompetent people in power. That's a great point. It's interesting how Bloomberg bought his way into the like if you have, Mm -hmm. you know, if you have enough money to know the right people, you can buy your way into the debates. I mean, it's to go nowhere. No one wanted Bloomberg. And then it goes money. It goes even beyond that. Once you're in, you know, for example, Congress. Once you're in Congress and you've been elected, then it takes money to get on the committee seats. Oh. So to mm. become Speaker of the House, that's not because the person you know is the best leader from that party. That is not the reason why they're Speaker of the House. They're oh, wow. Speaker of the House because they raised the most money. Yep. And oh, that is wow. well known inside of Congress. On both sides, they do this. If you want to be on uh, the top committee, then you have to raise a certain amount of money and give that money back to the party. Yep. Oh, and wow. it's actually printed out. They're handed this saying, if this is the committee seating, you, if you want this assignment, this is what it's going to cost you. And then, by the way, they leave office. They become lobbyists. Right. There are all these because you yeah. make a ton of money. Then they go back, campaign with their friends who are still in office. And it's like, it's money, money, money. We don't learn our lesson. To quote Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, here, I, I'm gonna talk, uh, I just want to read my pithy answer mm-hmm. here. My pithy answer is this. Focus less on government and more on 
contributing beyond yourself in That's a right. meaningful way. And this makes me think about what you were saying, Cam, about looking through it, uh, trying to put yourself in someone else's shoes, because ultimately what that leads us to do is show compassion. And I think that is what America is lacking right now. And yes. personally, I would much rather people go out of their way to show compassion than go vote. So that's the one exception where I'll be like, voting isn't as important as showing compassion. Yes. You could tweet that. Yeah. I don't yeah. think a person should vote if they don't know what they're voting about. Yes, yeah. that is absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that's a great like that. point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't hear that talked about at all. That's, what, yeah, it's brilliant. Well, maybe we can talk about this in the maximal, but I, I said this to Josh the other day, and he was like, I think TK is going to disagree with you. But I, because you're not voting, and I, I, what I tell, told him was, is it seems like it's not, it doesn't really make sense to me when someone goes off and rants about politics when they didn't vote in the election. It's like, in order to have a, an opinion that matters, you should vote. And mm. maybe we cover this in the maximal, but mm. I, I wanted to get your take on that because he challenged me on it. And I actually did kind of backpedal a little bit, but I, I would love to talk about that a little bit more. All right, before we get into our listener tips today, it looks like we've got a bunch more surprise questions this week, like... When is it okay to be out of touch? What's the best argument against democracy? When is it okay not to vote? Can we have compassion for someone we disagree with? Mm. If Joshua was, was Earth Czar, what are three ways he'd fix our broken political system? I think we'll posit that question for everyone as well. Mm. Who did the minimalists vote for in 2016 and who are they voting for now? Plus a million more questions for Kim, TK, and Jamie, and The Minimalists. And if you want to hear all that, subscribe to our Maximal episodes on The Minimalist Private Podcast. It's a completely separate podcast, and it's the most honest way for The Minimalists to earn an income because we don't believe in advertisements. By the way, if you're not a private podcast subscriber, you're literally missing two-thirds of our show, plus hundreds of hours of past private episode. So try it out for a week or a month. It's cheaper than a cup of coffee. Head on over to theminimalists.com slash support to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. That's theminimalists.com slash support. Ryan, what else you got for us this week? Here are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Check them out. Josh and Ryan, hey, it's Aaron, professional makeup artist. I've seen my fair share of tips, tricks, trends, looks, and products in my past decade of being in this industry. I've been a practicing minimalist for the past four years thanks to you guys, and one of my favorite things to do is trickle over what I know from personal minimalism into professional minimalism in the beauty industry, as it really needs help there. One of my favorite things that I do with my clients is refurbish vintage compacts. I find them in antique stores and vintage shops, and they might have personal heirloom vintage compacts from past family members. And then I install magnetic backing into the compacts and use refillable products, my line included, that go into those vintage compacts. So this means we don't have any plastic packaging. We're not throwing out the packaging when the actual products run out. And you have something much more beautiful and durable than anything in today's creations. It also encourages people to use what they have before buying something new because there's only so much that'll fit into the vintage compacts. The last perk, it's 100% customizable, so you're not hoarding shades you won't use. Hello, this is Keegan calling from Ogden, Utah. I wanted to share three quotes which add a ton of value in my life currently and help guide my journey with minimalism. The first one is one that I hear often on the podcast, which is the question, what would my life be like with less? The second is a quote I heard by Leonardo da Vinci, which says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. The third and by far my most favorite is a phrase I saw on product packaging for an alcoholic beverage, which said, consume responsibly. These two words can be applied in so many ways that promote intentional living and minimalist values. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Kim Iverson. Check her out. Kim Iverson Show on YouTube. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Also, Jamie Kilstein. His podcast is called A Fuck-Up's Guide to Self-Help. He also has a new comedy album coming out December 8th. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. You can follow him on social media to get updates about that. And of course, the reigning champion, TK Coleman. 
Revolution of One. It's uh, fee.org slash rev1 is his podcast. And really, it's like a TV show. You can check out the video version as well. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Also, you have a, a conference, an uh, online conference coming up. You want to talk about that real quick? Yes. Global Entrepreneurship Week is the week of November 16th. And on that week, we will be hosting a number of different panel discussions and talks that teach people how to become the CEO of their own life and how to introduce entrepreneurial thinking to the conflicts and challenges that they have. Well, Love it. You can follow TK Coleman on Twitter at TK underscore Coleman. Make sure you put that underscore in there. Otherwise, you're going to follow a different TK Coleman. Very different, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow The Minimalists on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Minimalists. Come to one of our live podcast shows. Visit theminimalists.com slash tour to find a city near you. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. You can comment on this episode at youtube.com slash theminimalists. If you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list over at the minimalists.com. You'll also receive our simple Sunday emails whenever we send those. And if you leave here today with just one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it